Hi, my name is Amanda Jorgensen, and I am a natural science illustrator and fine artist based in Seattle, Washington. My art ranges from the whimsical to the more realistic. I basically love drawing anything that you can find in nature, flora, fauna, even pets. In today's video, we'll be talking about how you can paint your own pet portrait in the following steps. Sketching, transferring, color mixing, and the painting process ultimately. We'll talk about how we can use our materials to create something that looks a lot like your own pet. First, we have Holbein Acrylic Wash in a primary color set. With this set, I'll be mixing the fur tones and eye colors of my subject, a little pug named Dracula. I particularly like acrylic wash because it doesn't reactivate with water and it leaves a really nice opaque finish. Next, we have Windsor & Newton sketching pencils. With these pencils, we'll be sketching a prelim portrait of our subject. I like to do that because it maps out the dark and light areas as well as the unique features. Then we have a Micron. I really enjoy using these for fine details. Next, we have General Scribble. This pencil is fantastic on any surface. Then we have our palette where we'll mix our gouache colors together. We have a silver white half brush, great for painting wider and larger areas. And then we have a Princeton 3 round. The tip is really great for painting finer details and then you can push harder to get various textures. This is Dracula. Dracula is a year old pug and may well be the cutest pug I have ever seen. If you're new to drawing animals or pets, usually a photo at three quarters view is best. But ultimately, I suggest you choose the photo which reflects the animal's personality. Next, it's ideal to select the area you'll focus your portrait on. This might be full body or just the head and shoulders. For this portrait, I am just focusing on Dracula's head and shoulders. Sketching is particularly important because it helps you map out potential problems, areas of light and dark, and gets in those unique features. For Dracula, it's his bug eyes, snub nose, and wrinkles. So I want to make sure that I get those in correctly before I move on to the final painted art. So really, it's a roadmap to the final product. So you can see I'm really darkening up areas where his fur is dark, where there's a good deal of shadow. Remember with your sketch that your sketches don't need to look 100% perfect. Like I mentioned before, this is your rough draft. As long as you're getting the basic shapes, important things that are unique to the animal, unique to the dog, cat, bird, turtle, whatever it is you're drawing, you are set. This is just a sketch. Remember that this takes time. It may seem like a trivial part of the process, but ultimately it will make your end painting go so much faster. I'm just going to go ahead and use the sepia charcoal just to make his eyes look a little bit alive. It's just fun to play around with materials too. Another important part of the sketching process is drawing in the direction of fur. You can see that I'm starting to do that here. If this part is difficult for you uh, with a colored photo, you can use a black and white photo. This will help solidify the areas that need to be darker and lighter in your sketch. Also remember to observe, like really, 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 really look at your, your photo because the direction in which the animal's fur goes, or shoot, if you're drawing a turtle, the way that their scales go, make sure that you are observing that. That is really important to making a more realistic looking drawing. Remember, this is just your rough draft. Your sketch doesn't need to be the most amazing thing ever. This is really just your map for your colored painted portrait. 
So once we're done sketching, we're going to need to be able to transfer our sketch onto the Frederick's canvas. So if you have any type of tracing paper, this is great to use. You can use your Micron to do basic line art to draw it out onto your um, tracing paper. I would suggest using this type of pen to do that because if you do it in graphite or charcoal, well one, it will smear, Two, you won't be able to see it once we color in the back of the line art um, with graphite to transfer it onto our canvas. Now, if you don't have tracing paper, that's fine. Feel free to use just about anything else. Things that I have used in past are, well, I've used wax paper, parchment paper, a piece of printer paper. That works just as well. Then you're going to flip it over. You know, you have it right side in. You're gonna flip it over, basically take a pencil and scribble in the back. Next, we'll flip the paper over and trace our sketch so that the graphite makes a copy onto our canvas. Here you can kind of see it lightly. We're gonna want some darker lines here. Just make sure that you have, you know, the basic outline, the basic unique shapes. Then we're gonna use our scry ball, right? And I told you that this is a really great tool to, uh, to work on canvas with. It, I've never used a pencil that has worked better and I find general graphite pencil lead very frustrating on canvas. Gouache will cover that right up no worries about seeing lines. Let's take a break from our piece and talk about mixing colors for our portrait. As you can see, um, wash is relatively thick, especially if you're not adding any water to it. You don't need a lot of paint. A little bit of paint goes a long way. If you're thinking about, you know, needing a more transparent layer of gouache for maybe a gouache wash, if you will, uh, go ahead and add as much water as you think you need to the paint and then you can spread it thinly. Of course, you can get your oranges ranging from hue. You know, the more red you add, the darker the orange. The more yellow you add, the lighter the orange. This is great for tabby cats. With your blue and your yellow, you can make a wonderful green. Good for cat eyes. And of course your red and your blue will make uh, you know, a nice purple and very few animals are purple, but if you are say working on a primarily black um, dog or cat, you can use this as a highlight color instead of just using gray. Mixing more yellow with it will kind of make it a little bit more brown. Adding white will, of course, lighten it up a good deal. And then adding more yellow will make it a warmer color. And you can kind of see I'm getting to a color base that I want Dracula to be. If you're looking for another way to make brown, which doesn't start with making purple, you can go ahead and mix an orange using, of course, your red and your yellow gouache and then adding a bit of black to it. Now, it depends on what or how dark you want your brown color to be. Of course, you know, the more black you add, the darker it will get. If you're wanting it to be lighter, of course, what you can do is add white to that brown get like a beautiful little tawny thing going on. So I think I found the brown that I want to use for areas of Dracula's eyes and of course his ears since they're not pure black. And good practice is if you found the color matching the, the fur that you want, uh, make sure you make enough of it so that you don't have to continuously mix new paint. It's okay if you do have to mix new paint because all sorts of animals have different kind of fur colors. So you're not gonna need, you know, 
don't worry too much about it. Adding white, you can see that I'm starting to get um, kind of a good undercoat for Mr. Dracula here. Adding black will of course make it darker again. You can make it orangey again. Really, you can just do just about everything with these paints. When painting your animals, you're gonna to wanna to start with a darker shade of the animal's natural color. You wanna do this because the very last layer is your detail layer. And on that detail layer will be the true color of your animal's fur. So in order to make that pop, you need a darker base so that you can see it. Because if you're just using the same color throughout, it's just gonna to blend together and you won't get those nice details in the end. So what I like to do first before I start filling in the painting at all is outline the basic features that we've transferred onto our canvas from our initial sketch. I do this because I like to remind myself where, you know, the you know, where the unique features are in the drawing, where certain areas end, like the jowl, where the neck is, where the back is, etc., etc. And I don't do this in the darkest color because I find that when you bring in your lighter colors, so like in the instance of Dracula, you want that nice kind of tawny color. If I were to do that with black, it just wouldn't blend in very well. So I'm just gonna go with a nice brown and just outline the basic features that we transferred onto our canvas. So once you've got your outline in, go ahead and start filling in the color. So this is color blocking. And I like to use colors that are darker than the actual fur itself so that when we get to the surface layer as in you know, the true color of the animal's fur, um, that those details really pop because the undertone, the underpainting, if you will, um, is just that much darker. Here you can use your three round. If you got bigger areas to fill in, you know, taking too long for you, um, go ahead and use your other brush. Save yourself some time. So this is where you're gonna start seeing the benefits of drawing that initial black and white sketch. So this is where we start adding in those shadows, the darker features, you know, areas where we need to um, show off shadows where the wrinkles are, where, you know, Dracula's eyes bug out a little bit more. So we'll start seeing the benefits of that. So if you were able to map out your, your pet in graphite or in charcoal, you might be having an easier time with the color blocking. And as you can see, uh, my gouache is a little bit more transparent here just because it's so wet. So if you're looking for more opacity initially, instead of building up the layers, remember, just use less water. So if you want your animal or your pet to look a little less weird in these initial stages, Good rule of thumb is to start painting in the eyes first, you know. They look a little bit more alive that way. This is the stage of your painting where you can sometimes have a little bit of self-doubt. Um, I will remind you that you need to be patient with yourself, especially because this takes a good deal of time and patience. We all go through those awkward stages. I like to call this stage in painting that awkward teenage phase. Remember yourself in what, seventh or eighth grade when your nose was too big for your face. But we just gotta move past that, you know? Just keep on painting. If it helps, take a break, step away. It is what it is. So keep adding the color blocks. Here you can see I'm adding more of gray tones, really making it more opaque, building up my layers. Um, and you can kind of see that I'm starting to create the movement or the direction of the fur. Now here's a tip. 
if you have brushes that are frayed, split, whatever, they are so good to use to paint fur. They add a good deal of texture and it just, um, just the way that the bristles lay, you can kind of see that it creates more movement, more detail. Starting to bring in the light color as opposed to just the dark. You can see that base layer actually plays a big role when I start putting in the highlights. Again, you can see how I'm using more of a true color to Dracula's fur. But you can still see that base layer through it. It really just makes it look a little bit more dimensional. If you ever need to correct any piece the nice thing with acrylic is that it is very simple to do. Simply paint over it. However, what I do recommend most people do is just take a step back from what you've been doing and be sure that that is necessary. Sometimes you just get so frustrated that you're just like, well, forget it. And then you might destroy the whole painting itself. Um, so just take a step back right quick. Then if you're like, no, sorry, the the nose just doesn't look right or whatever. You can just paint right over that, make your corrections. It's totally fine. It's easier for you to like map out what needs to be changed. Use a little bit of lighter paint, indicate the areas that are troublesome. But it's totally fixable. No need to throw it away. And you see we got the finer details in there, more hair bristle strokes, everything, using the three round for some more detail work. It's really important to you know, make those eyes look super alive. And when you're done, not only do you have dirty hands, but you have something beautiful to look at. I hope you are proud of your pet portrait, but admire what you've just done. It's pretty cool, and Dracula looks pretty cute. So if you want to show off your painting. We'd love to see it. I would love to see it. Tag us in that. If you post your piece online, use the hashtag sketchboxpetbox. Love to see your artwork. Thank you.